Hi, welcome back and to what is, in all probability, chapter 3. Now in chapter 2, one thing that I forgot to do was when leaning over the building board to glue things down, don't show the top of my head because it, when I reviewed it, it shows an extremely thinning top to the old skull bone. Never mind, point noted, I shall do that off camera in future. I did say in chapter two or chapter one that I'm going to show a trick that can be used to help when you're sticking the doublers, the ply doublers to a fuselage side. And that is the, by the use of heat, not to actually do the initial sticking, but to accelerate the sticking. When you're using PVA, PVA will react to heat. So logically, if you apply PVA, as I did in chapter two, to the fuselage doublers, let them go off for an hour or two, whatever it may be. If I then come back and apply heat, that will have a tendency to accelerate the adhesion. And in fact, I remember doing this sort of several years ago when I was building, funnily enough, Warbirds replicas uh, Lavochkin LA7. Superb model, beautiful flyer, and a similar sort of construction with the crutch and fuselage sides and doublers. And what happened with that build was that I just stuck the doublers onto the balsa wood with PVA, and when I went back the next day to look at them, the, the doublers were slightly peeling away at the edges or slightly moving away. There was a gap between the ply doublers and the balsa. And I just thought, well, I wonder if heat will help. So I applied heat and sure enough, they stuck and stuck really well. So now in terms of heat, how do you apply heat to the ply? Well, you can utilize these tools. So this is a covering iron, small covering iron, you can use that. Or, and don't tell my wife that I've got one of these, because she doesn't think I've got a license to operate one of these, but you can use an iron. This is a traveling iron, non-steam, obviously. Very cheap and cheerful, the cheapest one I could find uh, off Tinternet. And that's great for, yes, ironing on covering film, large areas, but in particular, when I am looking at applying heat to my doublers, I can utilize that as well. So let's just put it into wide mode so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's my doubler that I was looking at yesterday. Sorry last chapter, that may not have been yesterday, so I can just apply heat with my covering iron, apply it to the ply, or with my travelling iron, both of which will do the job admirably. Now one thing, if you do try this, you will probably find that as you do it, that will curve slightly towards the ply. No problem at all, just put it back the other side and apply heat to the balsa surface. That will draw them back in line. So that's the, the trick that I thought I'd let you know about that I use to great effect. So going back to the doublers, to complete the um, doubler, I looked at the ply doubler, but I mentioned the fact that you're going to have ta a tail doubler. Now the reason you've got a tail doubler is because the fuselage sides are extended with this small piece of balsa. It's in the kit, extended with that. So in other words, we need to make that joint strong because that's a straightforward butt joint. So to make that strong, we put those funny shaped doublers in place which adds strength to that but also gives a greater surface area on here for the tailplane to affix to later. So I did that off camera, just stuck them on with PVA, pins in to hold them on the drawing board. So those fuselage sides 
are not quite complete. We've got one other job to do, but they have got the doublers in place. The only job that we've got to do now to these sides before we attach them or before we're ready to attach them is to apply a balsa, what's called a longer on. It's a strip of balsa. A longer on usually is a strip of balsa that goes lengthways or sorry, a strip of wood that goes lengthways. In this case, we're talking about a strip of wood that goes at the bottom of the fuselage there. And what it does, it gives, it's a triangular piece of balsa and it gives a greater surface area because when we ultimately get to applying the sheet balsa covering under there, rather than just having the thin balsa side to stick it to, we've got the much greater area with those longer ons in place. Now looking at the the kit, ah oh, now I don't know if you've spotted it, Elmo around there, he has a penchant tendency to go towards the Gorilla Glue but he loves Superfatic. Fortunately the top's on and he can't get the top off because it's idiot proof top rather than child proof, idiot proof. So he's trying to get off with his teeth. We'll just bring it to one side. Okay. Yeah, you can stay there for the time being. Let's just delve in the, the box of bits and bring out these. So these are triangular strips of balsa. Two of those in the kit. Not mentioned in the the parts list, not mentioned on there because that's loose balsa, well at least I haven't found it in there anyway. But what we will do, or what I will do, is I will be cutting them to length. And gluing them into position down there. You'll notice that there is a gap there between the ply doubler and the bottom of the fuselage sides that allows for that longer on to go in there and if you find that that's not quite right it's impinging on that it doesn't matter just cut a bit out of the longer on it's no great problem there so that will go through to the the trailing edge notch of the wing there so turning attention to the crutch, there's the crutch that we showed, that I showed in chapter one, to which we fix the formers. Now logic says that we've got to think about how this assembly takes place, which is the fuselage sides get attached to the crutch. So in other words, the fuselage sides go down below the crutch because the upper fuselage sides go above it. So we need to apply the lower formers to the crutch and they are F5 and F7. F7 isn't actually shown on the drawing or sorry it isn't shown on the plan but is actually showing on the parts list here it shows down here uh, so we can see F7 like I say it's not actually shown on on the the plan itself but it joins the two notches that are in the back of the uh, crutch and goes down vertically so we've only got two formers to fix When I'm attaching formers to a fuselage sides, or in this case the crutch, I want to make sure that they are dead vertical, perpendicular. So I use my engineer triangles here to hold them in place whilst they set. And one at the back there, or maybe another at the back of that one, just to hold that in place as well. So they will be kept in place until dry. Now that they're dry we can 
remove the squares from the formers. We've now got our crutch with our formers, lower formers, F5 and F7 in place. And what will happen is the crutch will fit onto the fuselage sides or the fuselage sides onto the crutch. The one thing you'll notice if I just give a zoom in on the crutch there is a little notch there. Now that notch lines up with the notch there on the doubler. See Richard's thought of most things. Not everything but he's thought of most things. So what we will do is we'll be lining that crutch up there with the ply doubler and the fuselage then sides will neatly slot into place noticing that the let's just zoom in on that that the F7 former neatly straddles the rear balsa doubler there okay so the plan is what we will do is we will glue one side on and then we'll stick the other side on here and hold in place with clamps until they're dry. However, before we do that, I'm still going to apply, got to apply my longer ons to the bottom of the fuselage sides. I'm also going to do another little exercise which is not shown on the plans and I think will make it easier because if you think about it I'm going to be sticking the sides there to the crutch and as I said before about the longer ones giving a better surface area for the sheep balsa why not sort of replicate that with some blocks of balsa along the underside of the crutch and again that will give me a better surface area to stick these sides to makes it easier as well to hold them in the right place I'll do that off camera it's boring cutting bits now you can use off cuts from the kit there's plenty of um, balsa off cuts if I look at if I look at the strip here that the tailplane and rudder come in, this strip of balsa here is ideal. I could cut that and just put some blocks, maybe three blocks along each side of the crutch. So I'm going to do that off camera. A useful tool, if you haven't already got one, a razor saw extremely sharp extremely fine blade so as the name implies like a razor but with teeth and it's a draw draw saw so it doesn't cut both ways it's a draw saw ideal for cutting these longer ones to size like so and you'll see there I've notched the longer on there to fit round the ply doubler and that fits in there rather nicely snugly like that <clears throat> so that's one and I'll now <clears throat> measure and cut the other one so sticking these into play in place using Gorilla Glue As I said before, you don't want to, you don't need to put loads on. <clears throat> I'm going to 
put this on and then spread it. Using a skewer, bamboo skewer. Make sure I've got the, the right one. Obviously what I don't want to do is stick that round the wrong way and I don't have a right angle at the bottom to a flat surface, sorry not a right angle, flat surface at the bottom to stick the under sheeting to. That's absolutely fine. I'm just going to use my square just to line it up with the the edge of the fuselage. I don't want it sticking proud, don't sticking out too much. Oh, I don't really want it sticking out at all because that means I've got to sand the blessed thing down. So at least a amount of work for me to do the better really. Pin it in place. I don't particularly want to pin it to the board at the moment so A bit from that and making sure that it's dead level with the bottom edge of the fuselage sides. That's fine. Just wipe off a bit of the excess glue. Again you don't want it to form a, a lump which will stop the, the sheeting sticking on nicely and flat, nice and flat. Get some pins out. Word of warning, if you do put pins in a tray like I do, be careful when you pick them up because Sod's Law says that when you pick them up you'll stick your fingers into a point of a pin like I just did. However, it's much more convenient having them in a big open tray like that. It's easier to pick them up. As long as you're careful, or as long as you're like me with about goodness knows how many layers of skin on your finger. Hard callous skin because I'm an old git. And there we go. So those sides now I'll put it I'll will put aside um, for sticking onto the crutch when everything is dry. Good. Oops. And dear friend Elmo is still with us, keeping tabs on what I'm doing. He's actually got some of the next pieces that will go on, but he's a bit ahead of the game really. Those formers, they sit on top of the uh, crutch to take the upper fuselage sides. Talking of which, Let's go back to those upper fuselage sides. If you remember going back to my previous chapters, I mentioned the fact that several builders have already commented on the fact that it is they're too shallow for the cockpit canopy. Um, and the cockpit canopy is coming to about there. So what we need to do is to raise the sides up a bit because we're going to be fixing through this for the canopy. So that's why I've glued them in place on the, the balsa strip sheet, sorry, that I that they come in ready for me now to cut a nice, I suppose, parallel line. I think looking at what people have done, Eric uh, in particular, the professor, uh, I think it tapers can taper down to there, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut that line parallel, make it parallel, because ultimately I can always chamfer that down if I find that it's a bit too high. I don't think it will be, personally, but we shall see. So I've just got to get my big ruler. And let's sight Put that on there and the got a smaller ruler here somewhere. Oops, come here. 
that is 12 mil so let's just make a, a line there so I can do my parallel cut from the top of the rear of the fuse here to the front obviously being careful not to go too far forward several thin cuts are better than one deep cut and of course it should go without saying sharp blades are a must um, I buy them in bulk non-surgical blades which are just end that through there which are relatively inexpensive. One thing that blunts a blade quicker than anything else is cutting covering film. Uh, you get through loads of blades when you are cutting covering film. It's incredible how easy they get blunted. Again, keep, keep the off cuts, the sheets. They may come in handy, obviously things like that you can throw away. So I'm just separating the side, the upper, from the sheet. And these are very, very well laser cut. Phil's made a good job of these. No question about that. So very little is required. But what you can see now is that my fuselage side has now been extended upwards where the canopy goes. I shouldn't have a problem. What I'll also do is later I will put some thin ply on the inside of this so that when the canopy is fixed through screws it will screw through into the thin ply on here. I'm obviously not going to do that at the moment I'll do that later.